When I say the word stealth game, what's the first game that comes to mind? If you say Metal Gear Solid, you'd be correct. If you said Splinter Cell, you would be correct also. But if I were to say playing the antagonist, then there would be some commotion. Well, Thief, The Dark Project, and the rest of the Thief games in the series fit that bill. In this game, you play as Garrett, the main character who robs from the rich and keeps for himself. Now that's interesting, someone who robs from the rich but decides not to share the wealth. That's okay, Garrett doesn't have to share. Anyways, Thief the Dark Project was released for PC on November 30th, 1998. The story follows Garrett, first as a homeless kid who pickpockets, then into a master thief. Thanks to some training from the keepers, yeah. the game starts off as a simple case of burglary, but later on, things start to get more and more bizarre. Now I'm not going to spoil this for you. For this review, I'm only going to showcase the training and the first mission. Speaking of the training mission, if you're not familiar with the game's concept, this would be a good place to start. The game teaches you everything from moving in shadows to movement on various surfaces. Funny I mentioned it because these are the two most important things to keep in mind while playing the game. Let's get down to business. The graphics are really well done and the use of light and shadow bring Thief together to create a masterpiece of 1998 proportions. The characters are also well done, although you'll be running into the same characters from time to time. At the same time, there are drawbacks. While having the dark atmosphere is well done, it can also appear too dark from time to time, even with the lights on. This can cause some navigation issues, but adjusting the brightness can make or break the game. Now you see what happens when it's too dark? The difficulty you pick determines your objectives. The harder the difficulty, the more professional you have to be. Meaning that you'll have to accumulate a certain amount of loot or can't be allowed to kill specific characters. The difficulty determines how many enemies you encounter. Again, the harder the difficulty, the more enemies show up. Oh, and also the fewer resources you begin with. The sound is perhaps the icing on the cake. From the background music to the voice acting, this is what made Thief a memorable game. One night Garrett's song, voice man. acting is top, and the That's voices of the other characters you. are excellent. They get inside the voices, you, this game is also one of the specific word, Taffer. So what exactly does Taffer mean? I tried looking it up online, but I couldn't find the answer. It was just a made-up word invented by Looking Glass Studio. Someone should put that word in the English dictionary. The controls are mostly like any other first-person shooter, but in 1998, there was one mechanic that separated it from all others, the ability to lean left, right, and the strangest of all, forward. This is very useful if you want to peek around corners and not get caught. It's most useful when you're putting out torches, but then again, it can backfire because even if you are peeking, the enemy can still see you, and if they bump into you, it's all over. Remember, you are trespassing. One thing I find rather unusual are the drunken guard. I mean, is drinking on the job prohibited? It isn't too often when you see it, but when you do, you know they're easy pickings. Why did Lord Bafford hire these guards? Never mind, it's not that important. The gameplay for the most part consists of scoring lots and lots of loot. From time to time, you'll have to retrieve an object for someone or rescue someone. As mentioned before, your trespassing and stealth is key to survival. The little gem that's on the bottom of the screen will determine whether enemies can see you or not. The darker the gem, the less visible you are. Between missions, you can shop for additional arrows, potions, and the occasional hot tip. The combat is also very good, and it's safer to knock out your enemies rather than killing them. The main issue is in blocking. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but rather it's kind of awkward. As seen here, I had some trouble keeping up with the blocking, and I got hit a few times. Considering that I used the middle mouse button to block, I also managed to scroll through my inventory, making it a little bit harder to block. The archery aspect is also very good, but I find the targeting gadget a little hard to use because it's just a rectangle with no guide. Since the arrows arc in flight, making the perfect shot takes some getting used to. The arrows actually don't fly that fast. The map is also something I had issues with because it doesn't keep track of where your location is, but rather where you're at. And that can be problematic because it's very easy to get lost, but the compass can reorient you and get you on your way. There's quite a bit of interactive objects to play with, from treasures to useless items, nothing's off limits for Garrett. Overall, Thief the Dark Project earns a high marks in all aspects, even with the issues I mentioned, this game brings in a breath of fresh air from the over-the-top cliché of good guys saving the world. It's actually rather nice to play an antagonist for once. Thief the Dark Project gets 5 stars out of 5. You taffer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two beauties right here. If you want to subscribe to my videos, click this button here. And if you want to see more of my videos, click this button over here.